It is shaping up to be a long season after just week one. So buckle up and subscribe to the channel. Join over 36,000 strong if you have not already. And also, if you are subscribed, I recommend turning on your notifications because we could be getting a lot of breaking news over the next few days. I don't want you to miss anything. So subscribe and turn on those notifications. <laughs> We've got a roster signing, and potentially by the time you're watching this, two roster signings to go through on today's episode. The Browns were hit, I wouldn't say hard by the injury bug in week one, but they definitely picked up some casualties. So we're going to recap the guys who unfortunately come out of the Cowboys loss week to week, and that has paved the way for the Browns to make some roster moves. So four players are week to week, David Njoku, Maurice Hurst, Mohamed Diabate and Tony Field. So two linebackers, a tight end, and a defensive tackle. So as a result of the two linebackers getting a week-to-week -week, uh, designation, the Browns went out and signed a linebacker. Kaliki Hudson off the Saints practice squad. A former fifth-round pick by the Washington Commanders out of the University of Up North. Uh, in his career, 50 games played and 12 games starts under his belt. So he's got a good amount of experience, but I don't think the Browns are signing him to toss him out on the field initially. I think this is more of a depth signing. Now, Hudson, though, last year did start eight games and appeared in all 17 for the Commanders. He had some good numbers. If you're just going box score hunting, 74 tackles, five tackles for loss, a sack, two pass breakups. So you can see why the Browns decided, okay, this is a viable path with, when you look at the depth chart here, Tony Fields and Diabate both being injured. Plus, Jordan Hicks was injured throughout much of training camp. And Nathaniel Watson, the rookie, also got injured towards the end of training camp. So going into the season, you kind of felt like, or after one week of the season, it feels like you only really have two true healthy linebackers in JOK and Devin Bush. So you already got two guys who are week to week, and you got two other players who are kind of nursing injuries. You want to get healthier at that position, but you also want to have some depth. So I think this is a depth slash special team signing. Diabate and Tony Fields were primarily special teamers. We saw a little bit of Tony Fields on Sunday before he got injured. But I think for Hudson initially, this is a, hey, first off, we just got to cover our bases because we're already thin at that position. But B... We need some help on special teams since Fields and Diabate serve big roles in those departments, and they are out for the next couple of weeks. Now, when you look at the Browns' top two linebackers in general, I mean, their week one stats, JOK, nine tackles, one pass breakup. He played 100% of the snaps. Meanwhile, Jordan Hicks, seven tackles, 45 snaps. Uh, Tony Fields was the next highest linebacker in snaps. He played about 20 to 21 snaps. So you're trying to fill that void a little bit. And maybe we see Hudson tossed out on the field as early as Sunday. But I think we're going to see him mostly in a special teams role. Now, next up on the show, there could be another signing. As I'm filming on Tuesday morning, the Browns are working out a couple of tight ends. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But talking about the defense in general, how would you grade it from week one? I am curious to know what everyone's thoughts are because a casual viewer is going to see 33 points and go, ooh, tough day for the defense. Seven came off a punt return. So right off the bat, we go from 33 down to 26. The offense only scored one touchdown. Brandon Cooks on some lo some level of a miscommunication where Juan Thornhill thought he had help behind him, but that never really made a lot of sense to me because he's the safety, so he's got to know he is the last line of defense, and Brandon Cooks just ran right past him. So how would you grade the Browns' defense in week one? I'd give it a B plus. I mean, if Denzel Ward converts some of those PBUs into interceptions, we probably don't get a different result, but... Maybe we get a better first half. So for me, it's a B-plus out of the Browns' defense in week one. Give me your letter grade, though, in the comment section. Now, next up by, on the show, David Njoku lost for a few weeks because of an ankle injury. So the Browns are bringing in some veteran tight ends. And maybe by the time you're watching this, they have already signed one of those tight ends. Now, first, I do want to fill everyone in on our sponsor today, which is Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks 
filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. GameTime offers the GameTime guarantee. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, GameTime will credit you 110% of the difference. Now, terms apply, but again, create an account and redeem code CHAT Sports for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. So, Jeremy Fowler reporting that the Browns are working out a handful of tight ends, including. Irv Smith Jr., who was with the Vikings for a little bit, Bengals last year, Tommy Sweeney, and Jeff Swam, who was a longtime Dallas Cowboy, and also a good amount of time with the Tennessee Titans. So looking at these three tight ends a little bit closer and their career numbers, Irv Smith definitely jumps out as somewhat of the best of the bunch. One, he's pretty young. He's only been in the league for four seasons, whereas Jeff Swam. Sorry to be ageist here, but he's on you know the wrong side of 30, been around the block for a long time. I always looked at him as more of a blocking tight end. And maybe after what Micah Parsons did to the Browns offensive line week one, they want to go get a blocking tight end. But if it comes down to these three guys and I had to pick, I would go with Irv Smith Jr. He's a little bit of a physical specimen. I mean, somewhat similar to Njoku in that way. And we know Andrew Barry just loves talent. I mean, he just went out and signed Kadarius Toney. He wants speed. He wants athleticism. And of those three guys, that is Irv Smith Jr. So my pe- my preference for the three would be Irv Smith Jr. And I'm hoping that if you're watching this video in a few hours and the Browns have already signed Smith after I filmed this video, I kind of spoke it into existence. So with that being said, priority number one, though, is to understand that Njoku's replacement is Jordan Akins. He, I thought, had a nice job filling in for Njoku after he went down with the ankle injury against the Cowboys, three grabs for 27 yards. So that is your first line of defense right there. That's the next man up. Now, without Njoku, the offense just has to pivot. Like, you're not going to find anywhere near the level of production from Irv or anyone else off the street right now in the tight end department. So for Ken Dorsey and company, they got to come up with a, 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 I wouldn't say a new game plan because I'm not even sure what the game plan was for week one. I don't know what they wanted to accomplish offensively. Whatever it was, they never got that plane off the ground. From all the pre-snap penalties, just pushing them behind the marker, to a lack of a ground game, to inadequate passing from Watson, to shaky offensive line play at stretches. Like, whatever the game plan was, we never saw it. I mean, I I think the game plan was short passes because nothing really went downfield very much until it was a blowout. But improvements the Browns have to make going into Week 2 against the Jags just flat out better quarterback play from Deshaun Watson, right? I don't think the entire loss falls on his shoulders. I think that's a little bit of a surface level take because everyone's just so frustrated that they haven't gotten better play from him that when he has a bad game, everyone wants to put all the blame on him. He definitely deserves a good chunk of the pie, but he doesn't get the whole pie to himself. There needs to be a rushing attack. I mean, Jerome Ford, one run for over 10 yards and late in the fourth in a blowout when he got 11 yards on a carry. The Browns had no identity whatsoever on the ground. I think that kind of got glossed over because everyone's so focused on Watson. But Jerome Ford and the offensive line, just nothing got going. Just no explosive plays to begin with from the ground game. And then finally, reduce the penalties. I mean, they weren't giving up like huge yardage and penalties, but they just kept shooting. Like they kept stubbing their toe, basically. Illegal shift, false starts. You guys are at home. This is an opportunity for you to impose your will on the uh, visiting team and let the dog pound make make their life miserable with false starts of their own. Instead, I got Dewan Jones jumping off like twice before the snap. So these are three improvements that must be made before they go out and take on the Jags. Now, speaking of week two, who do you got? Browns, Jags. I feel like... Everyone is going to dramatically overreact to week one and just rush to Jacksonville. I'm not giving up on this team. I mean, we saw last year this team went through five different starting quarterbacks and a bazillion injuries. And what did Stefanski and company do? 
They bounce back pretty much after every single loss. Stefanski has a great track record in games following a loss. So I'm sticking with the Brownies. I'm not giving up after one week, and neither should you. That's going to do it for us on today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want more coverage, go follow me on Twitter, at Matthew Petey. I'm always talking about the Brownies, always, oh, oh, I'm always talking about the Brownies uh, over there. So we will sign off and see you guys next time.